So you know, Ray was uh, took out. He took office on November 19th in 2003. So as of fall of 2015, uh, Ray Stephenson is the longest-serving mayor of, of Everett. So uh, congratulations on that. <laughs> As the mayor of the largest city in the county, uh, Ray's is focused on public safety, on economic and downtown development, on budget and finance, on quality of life issues, and on creating additional access to higher education opportunities here in our corner of the Northwest. He's a former president of the Puget Sound Regional Council and currently serves on its executive board, uh, as well as the uh, executive board of the Prosperity Partnership, and he's on the board of the Economic Alliance. He chaired Governor Inslee's 777X Permit Streamlining Task Force and previously served former Governor Gregoire on her Higher Education Funding Task Force. And with that, I'd like to now introduce our mayor, Ray Stephenson. As I look back to uh, 2003 when I first took office, it's remarkable how many things have remained constant the economy and its effect on our ability to deliver projects and services, it's always at the core of what we do as a municipal government. But other things have changed significantly. In 2016, we will be focusing more intently than ever before on issues that directly affect people's health and well-being and the quality of life as a community. One of our essential responsibilities as a municipal government is managing the city's resources, and we do that responsibly and effectively to ensure that we're able to provide services, programs, infrastructure to our citizens and our businesses. That certainly became more difficult during the recession, which was a wake-up call for all of us who uh, do local government work. As we recovered from the downturn, we've all been forced to acclimate to a new normal. The state and federal investments that used to provide critical funding for transportation projects, human services, and more are no longer a certainty, and we've been reminded quite clearly that local government is at the bottom of the food chain when it comes to revenues. For us as a city, it means that we have to look further out than ever before and be incredibly strategic and effective in how we allocate resources and deliver services. The city is fortunate to have a great track record of careful fiscal management and our commitment to pre-funding our financial obligations and maintaining healthy reserves served us well during the recession. While we certainly made adjustments, we weathered the downturn better than many municipalities and did it without major layoffs or cuts in services. We're not out of the woods yet, and we're still facing budget deficits in the coming years. However, the work that we did in 2014 to bring our fees and rates in line with the cost of doing business, as well as continuing efficiency studies of our largest departments, are already paying off. Throughout my career, my focus has been on large businesses that form the foundation of Everett's economy. Securing and retaining those major employers is critical in signaling our economic health as a community and attracts subcontractors, supplier, and service industries that help diversify our economy. For Everett, aerospace and the military have long been constants. We're fortunate to be home of Boeing and the Naval Station Everett, and I'm grateful for the partnership that we've had with both organizations throughout my time as mayor. But as we've learned, neither industry is a given, and we've worked hard to ensure that the aerospace and Navy remain in Everett for many years to come. In 2013 and 14, I campaigned for the 777X to be built in Everett, the new world-class composite wing center, which measures 1.3 million square feet, is slated to open in May. And we're already seeing the important impacts of Boeing's continuing commitment to Everett both in terms of construction revenues and new companies and jobs taking root in our community. In fact, when Boeing broke their record for commercial plane delivery in 2015, more than 94% of those planes were assembled in Washington State. And I think we should give Boeing a hand and thank them for all that they've done for our community.
There have also been more than 1,200 trade workers on site building the new wing facility since October 2014. Everett is now home to 72 aerospace suppliers, including two companies who have added new locations here in 2015. And I know we'll continue to reap the benefits of being the home of the industry leader far into the future. This will be a big year for Navy as we welcome three destroyers to Everett, along with more than 300 new sailors and families. And while I'm disappointed the Nimitz will not return to Everett until 2019, I appreciate the Navy's consideration of sailors and families by limiting home port changes over the coming years. We know that Everett is a key strategic location for the Navy, and we will continue to work with military leaders here and at the Pentagon, as, we, as well as our congressional delegation, to ensure that Naval Station Everett remains a valuable asset to our country and to our region. While the Navy and aerospace have formed the foundation of the economy for many years, we're now seeing new industries emerge and expand. And as we've seen in recent years, years the healthcare and maritime industries offer immense opportunities for our community. And I'm excited to see how they've established themselves in Everett. Everett is home to two nationally recognized healthcare providers in Providence Regional Medical Center and the Everett Clinic. The Everett Clinic's upcoming uh, merger with the Vita will allow them to expand their services and move into new markets. And I believe the healthcare sector will only continue to grow in Everett, offering accessible, top quality care to our community and new and exciting career paths for our students. While maritime industry has always been part of our history, it has reemerged in recent, recent years as a new opportunity for creating stable, family wage jobs and positioning Everett to compete in new markets in years to come. The Port of Everett hosted more than 195 ships last year, the most since 2000, and many of them serving, aerospace, serving the aerospace industry. The port, port is also hard at work preparing to welcome more of these larger ships in 2016 by strengthening the seaports, existing infrastructure, and dredging and expending their berth capacity. There is more to be done in the waterfront, and redeveloping the Kimberly Clark property will be a critical piece in, the, in our effort to recreate the jobs that were lost when the mill closed in 2012. This site, if developed strategically, will provide a significant opportunity for rebuilding the West Coast commercial fishing fleet and will put us in a competitive advantage for state and federal maritime contracts. We need to see positive progress on this site in 2016, and my administration stands ready to work with future developers of this unique property. Overall, I'm optimistic about our, our economic uh, prospects in 2016 as we build on our 2015 successes. Last year, we welcomed several companies to Everett, including Electric Mirror, Court Furniture, Flower Baking, and Fortiv, a division of Danaher. Fortive is Everett's first Fortune 500 firm and the only one in the state not located in King County. The decision to launch this new international company from Everett is a reflection of our business-friendly environment and our strategic position in the aerospace industry. This year, we expect to finally exceed our prior revenue peak of 20, uh, 2008 with an estimated total revenue of $127 million. One major revenue contributor to our improving economy is the robust construction activity throughout the city. In 2015, we issued more than 6,500 building permits, representing $3.3 million in revenue for the city. For the past two years, we have exceeded our pre-recession numbers for permits, and we expect 2016 to be as strong. All of these projects will bring more residents, workers, and visitors to Everett for years to come. In no other area can we more clearly see the effects of changing revenue streams over the past several years than in transportation. The federal funding that used to support the critical infrastructure projects is far less certain, and it is left to state and local government to pull together resources for maintenance and mobility projects. And to that end, we advocated tirelessly in Olympia last year 
to ensure our legislators and the governor understood the importance of investing in these projects to keep goods and people moving throughout Snohomish County. We are home to the state's largest job center and a reliable transportation infrastructure is critical to our success uh, in advanced manufacturing network. Our work paid off. The state uh, in 2015, uh, the package included 670 million for Snohomish County projects, including funding for both phases of a long awaited freight mobility project that will keep trucks and traffic moving on 41st, Rucker and West Marine View Drive and construction on that project will start this summer. The state's budget also included funding for hard shoulder running northbound I-5 between Everett and Marysville and corridor improvements to SR-526. In return for the state's commitment, local government will need to make their own investment and in some cases provide matching funding. And I'm pleased that we're able to open the new Broadway bridge to traffic ahead of schedule last month our traffic engineering team did a remarkable job of designing a detour route that minimized disruption to drivers and worked with our contractor to complete this project as efficiently as possible. And this year we'll begin work to improve streetscapes and pedestrian safety on Hoyt Avenue between Wall and Pacific and on Rucker Avenue between Pacific and Everett Avenue. We've received grant funding for majority of the project cost, and I'll ask the City Council to improve the remaining funding. Upgrading these streets with new sidewalks and pedestrian-friendly features will enhance the walkability of our downtown. In late 2016, we will begin work on the Grand Avenue pedestrian bridge and stormwater pipeline project. This bridge will add a new connection from the Grand Avenue Park Bluff to our beautiful waterfront. Even as we maintain and improve our existing infrastructure, we're always looking ahead. Last year, we completed a 10-year update of our comprehensive plan, a major undertaking by our planning commission and staff. The plan sets uh, new growth targets for jobs and population in Everett, focusing more future growth on the downtown core and Everett station areas and along transit corridors as more and more people serve uh, seek urban living options. Everett is expected to grow by 60,000 citizens and 45,000 jobs by 2035, but that growth will only be possible if the region and state invest in necessary transportation improvements. In 2016, we will continue to advocate on behalf of critical regional transportation needs. I'm excited that commercial air at Payne Field is slated to become a reality this year and I applaud our county council members for approving the lease with Propeller Incorporated. I look forward, forward to adding the convenience and reliability of commercial air and that will provide uh, opportunities for businesses as well as recreational travel, travelers in Everett and throughout the county. And finally, 2016 will be a critical moment for our future of light rail in Snohomish County. And we already are working hard to ensure that sound transit leaders bring uh, voters in alignment that serves the job centers in Southwest Everett. In 2015, we saw many long awaited projects begin construction. This year, many of them will open their doors to residents, tourists, businesses, and shoppers. Along the Snohomish River, construction will begin this summer on single family homes and townhomes with the first properties available for purchase before the end of the year. We expect several exciting announcements related to the commercial core of the riverfront property that will help create a thriving neighborhood and a destination for Everett visitors and residents. On the other side of the city, the port's waterfront place development is gaining momentum. In the first quarter of 2016, we'll see construction activity at the Fisherman's Harbor along West Marine View Drive, the future home for housing, restaurants, and retail. Residents and visitors can look forward to improvements in three public spaces at Waterfront Place this year, including the kite shelter at Boxcar Park and Jetty Landing, the creation of a new South Marina Plaza near the Woodfire uh, Grill. In Everett, the new uh, Aero Apartments opened last fall and 60% of the 102 units are already leased. And on Grand Avenue, more than half 
of the 228 Patella Marketplace apartments have tenants, and work is nearly complete on the 60,000 square foot space, which will feature a bakery and Italian restaurant. And the 156 room Marriott Hotel at Wall and Colby is scheduled to open in June and will provide much needed space for overnight stays within walking distance of the arena and our other downtown attractions. Creating opportunities for students to receive a world-class education here in Everett has long been a priority for me, and it's exciting to see that the progress uh, that we're making. The foundation of that is our Everett School District, as well as Muckleteal, that both serve Everett and our community colleges uh, in Everett and Edmonds, and I want to thank them for recognize a critical need in our community. We've advocated on behalf of family and students for many years to bring Washington State University to Everett, and I couldn't have been happier to participate in the groundbreaking for the North Puget Sound University Center last fall. The new building is currently under construction and will open for students in 2017. Across the street, Everett Community College will open new housing for 36 students this fall with plans to expand their housing options over the next several years. And just as important as physical spaces are the career paths that we're helping to create for students in Everett. WSU has added degrees in electrical engineering, communication and hospitality, and is establishing a new joint center for deployment and research for earth abundant materials. It's an, a collaborative partnership with the University of Washington and Pacific Northwest National Laboratory. And Everett is also benefiting from the new Washington State University Medical School, which will train doctors at Everett healthcare facilities to serve rural populations. We're also supportive of the WSU initiative to bring ag degrees to Everett campus, benefiting many of the rural areas in Northwest Washington. One of the overarching goals um, that will guide much of our work in 2016 is a continuation of our streets initiative efforts. In 2015, we made major strides in our work to create a safer, more vibrant community for all residents, including those living on the streets. By the end of this month, we'll have lined up permanent supportive housing for five of our chronically homeless citizens, with another 15 targeted for housing by the end of June. This is the first step in our effort to expand the Housing First model in Everett and in the entire county. In the coming weeks, we will announce the first phase of our capital project to build a facility that will house about 60 chronically homeless in individuals. And at the same time, we are helping facilitate a countywide conversation about how other jurisdictions can develop permanent supportive housing in their communities including at the upcoming event with Governor Inslee and representatives from Spokane, Tacoma, and Seattle. And that event will be occurring on February 1st. In addition to our housing projects, we've established a street outreach unit with dedicated police officers, two embedded social workers, and a new prosecutor. We're also expanding our successful alternative sentencing and diversion program by starting a work crew that will operate out of the first floor of this building, cleaning up the very areas that have been affected by our street populations. And we know that it will take a balanced approach to effectively address the street level social issues and our efforts are intentionally designed to provide enforcement mechanisms for those who intentionally are breaking the law or preying on the vulnerable. In December alone, our dedicated streets unit arrested over 100 people in the Smith uh, Avenue area, primarily for drug offenses. And at the same time, we know that enforcement only approach will not create the lasting effects that our community and our homeless residents need. Our plan is centered on route outreach and connecting those on the streets with housing and services. We also are working to ensure that resources are available for those who need them. And in 2016, we'll advocate uh, we are advocating at the state and federal level for increased investments in housing, mental health care, and drug and alcohol treatment. I'm continually impressed by the vast uh, experience, knowledge, and compassion 
that exist here in Everett, and I'm grateful for the significant support and leadership that's been offered by Snohomish County Human Services, great department, Dave, and the Snohomish County Jail, as well as community partners, many who are in the room today. Through our united efforts, we're making a real impact on the lives of, the, of our most vulnerable citizens. As I said at the beginning of my remarks, looking back over the last 12 years, there have been many reoccurring themes and challenges, and it's gratifying to see the progress we've made on so many fronts. Some of our initiatives and ideas have, taking many, have taken many years to come to fruition, and I'm grateful for the advocacy and support of so many of you in this room. 2016 will bring its own challenges and opportunities, and I know as a city and a community we will rise to the occasion. Thank you.